So hello, everybody. Thank you for being here for this uh, digitalization session. So this session will be dedicated to showcase the project that addressed uh, the thematic of digitalization. We have with us three projects, inspired beautiful projects. Uh, we have here, we will have uh, America Latina, Latina America, Africa, and Asia, which is very interesting. And uh, we will start uh, with uh, Academica project. So we will have three projects, Academica, Mahmouk, and Lala. So I will uh, give the floor uh, to um, Academica team that who will present this beautiful project. So I give you the floor, Dr. Anwar Beck and uh, Asulian uh, Aisulu from Shokan State University from Kazakhstan. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Latifa. I am starting. Uh, the name of project Academica, Accessibility uh, accessibility and harmonization of higher education in Central Asia through curriculum modernizations and development. Uh, academic project main aims. The project aims to contribute to the modernization and improvement of higher education, the field of engineering sciences in Central Asia through uh, voluntary conversions with uh, the European education standards, the achievements and expertise of in the, the development of modern learning environments, the good European Union practices and innovative ICT and based uh, methodologies for teaching and learning. Uh, countries involved in the project consortium, uh, the grant holders is uh, Bulgaria, is the uh, Burgas Free University, Austria, Italy, Spain, uh, from Central Asia, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. Academica project partners, Europe. Burgas Free University coordinated uh, University degli Studi Marconi, Italy, University Politecnica de Valencia, Spain, University of Applied Science Hochschule Ionem, Austria, from Kazakhstan, uh, country coordinated Shokan Walihan of Kokshetau State University, International Information Technology University. Abai Murzahmetov Kokshetau University. Uh, now it's a uh, change names, uh, Kostanai Regional University, Kazakhstan Association of Engineering Education, Ministry of Education and Science of Republic of Kazakhstan. From Uzbekistan, Samarkand Agriculture Institute, Tashkent University of Information Technologies, Ministry of High and Secondary Education of Republic of Uzbekistan, from Turkmenistan to University, uh, Turkmen State Institute of Culture, Turkmen State Institute of Finance, two associated partners, uh, Institute of International Relations, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Turkmenistan, EU's organizations, Fan Jasotan, Akmola Region, Republic of Kazakhstan. Um, the next slide is a uh, the primary objectives, provision of flexible access to higher education, modern educational environments, improvement of the university lecturers, uh, live life learning. Um, in next, uh, modernizations of the university curriculum, uh, system for transnational cooperation and knowledge exchange. Research phase of academica. 
research phase aimed to detect the core current state of the higher education in engineering and engineering trades and uh, to the outline aspects and uh, measures uh, for improvement the capacity of the university from Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and Turkmenistan. Methods used um, desk research, research in the field. Uh, next slide is a desk research stage. Aim the assessment of the of the academic program uh, consistency, main cr criteria and uh, indicators. Uh, co-required and elective courses, uh, teaching staff, policy toward use it, uh, of modern approach and methods, existing quality assurance systems, the current state of the ICT facilities and uh, ICT basics, education, uh, share of new courses, uh, subjects, introduced for the last three years. The um, comp competencies of education and the, and the uh, employability of the graduates. Research in the field. Target groups covered students, university lecturers, employers, organization and Companies, total number of respondents, uh, 391. 57% students with engineering specialisms, 26% uh, full-time lecturers in engineering disciplines, 70% are top-level managers of companies. Uh, academic considerations, transforming higher education requires uh, pedagogical, technological, and organizational innovation, the basic conditions for enabling innovative learning practices are technological infrastructure, qualified uh, faculty staff, relevant digital policy. Uh, I give the floor to uh, Professor Aysulu Shaykhmetu. Development academic training pass methodology. Academic methodology for cap capacity building in higher education. Technology, technology related aspects. IT infra infrastructure, virtual learning environments, communication and collaboration space. Human research, expanding the lectures, lively learning competencies. Organizational aspects. Development of the learning process model to facilitate continuous improvement and innovations. Thank you. So I want to continue our presentation with the development stages of the project. Project development stages consist uh, of preparation stage that included such activities as setting up academic laboratories, training the new team members, development of virtual learning environment. The next stage included training the university lecturers. This piloting stage supposed selection of participants, English language course for selected participants, collecting feedback from lecturers. Uh, the second piloting stage uh, was developed with involvement of students and supposed uh, redesigning and modernizing courses, collecting uh, feedback from students development of year catalog appro uh, approbation of uh, modernized courses. Next one uh, is academic uh, virtual learning environment. During project realization, eight academic laboratories were established in all Central Asian universities, fully equipped to support all development, modernization and exp experimentation activities. Next one is uh, um, 
Now we want to devote our ne uh, next slides to academic year training for lecturers. So more than 120 university lecturers from Central Asia universities were involved in academic training. Academic year course um, training consisted of six modules dedicated to such topics as distance learning evaluation, learning materials development, pedagogical technical for traditional, and uh, distance learning, and so on. So uh, here you see the examples uh, of con uh, content model. The courses uh, were developed on sound technological base according to the broadly accepted year learning standards, assuring interoperability and reusability of the learning content in changing educational context. So uh, next slide is, uh, it is about interactive virtual classes. Virtual classes were implemented through the using of uh, Google Hangouts communication platform. So all established laboratories were connected to the online video call. The lecturers presented overview of the corresponding module. Trainees were able to ask questions and to receive feedback. The distance um, the discussions were broadcasted on YouTube and the records were published in the academic YouTube channel. The next one is open discussions. The aim of discussions forum was to promote and facilitate the communication and cooperation among all participants in the pilot phase. All participants were invited uh, invited to share information, opinions, experiences, and ideas related to the usage of ICT-based approaches and tools. The following forum types had been used. A single sample discussion. Each participant may post a discussion, questions and answers uh, forum. Next one is a uh, catalog of 106 modernized course. It was developed catalog of courses modernized by the lecturers who had successfully passed the academic training. All registered courses were piloted by the lectures with groups of their students. In the next slide, uh, we want to show the results of survey of lecturers about the satisfaction level after the pilot year course piloting one. Uh, this, slide, uh, this survey shows that more than 90% uh, of lecturers perceive that they know now more about the activities related to ICT related usage in classrooms than before the training. Uh, here you see the results of survey on the satisfaction level after the year course piloting too. This stage included responses of students as well. Total 1,330 students took part in piloting stage. According to responses, in three countries, more than 90% of respondents were satisfied with the training. Uh, so in the next slides, we want to show you um, how partners work on dissemination and exploitation of results. Uh, we had uh, in the project, uh, the, pro the project has its own website and more than 180 dissemination and exploitation outputs were registered in Project Dropbox, such uh, as publication in social networks, institutional websites, uh, mass media and uh, YouTube and so on. And one of the dissemination results was development of academic compendium. So, uh, to improve awareness of the target groups about the project, to attract lecturers and students, and to facilitate their act active inclusion in the first and second project piloting phase, two exploitation events were organized. Over uh, 740 officially participants were registered in these events. Uh -huh. So in the next slide, uh, you can see uh, our informative materials such as brochures, project academic poster, newsletters, academic year course brochure, and so on. And the next, in the next one, you see uh, um, photos <laughs> of dissemination activities. Uh, you see, yes, uh, on TV, YouTube, uh, everywhere, the project's results were disseminated. 
Mm -hmm. And as I said before, the main, one of the main uh, dissemination activities uh, uh, outputs um, uh, was academic compendium that was developed uh, within the project. So uh, this is the end of our presentation. Thank you so much for attention. If you have some questions, maybe. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, and thank you for, for being here on time. Um, I would like questions. Please don't hesitate to put your questions on the Q&A uh, corner. I will give the floor now to the second project, Mahmoud. So we, will back, we are back from Central Asia to North Africa with Mahmoud. Uh, the floor is yours. I'm just trying to, voila, the floor is yours, Mr. Klawi. And uh, let me just to try to, uh, we can't hear you, Mr. Klawi. Uh, I and, think uh, Mr. Ancho, Mr. Ancho, Professor Mr. Ancho is the first one. Yes. He's the first. Uh, okay, Mr. First. Dr. Sanchez. And okay. Dr. Klawi Dr. is a professor uh, from uh, University Abdelmelk Sedi from Morocco, and uh, Dr. Angel Sanchez from University of Vigo from Spain. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. I'm going, uh, uh, I'm going to talk about the Marmuk project um, together with uh, Mr. Kamal Klawi which is the coordinator in the Moroccan, of the Moroccan universities in this project. We have divided our presentations in two important aspects, a general aspect of the, of the results and, and um, uh, the main part of the project, uh, which is uh, going to be presented by Professor Kamal and I'm going to talk about the technical part of the project. This project uh, begins uh, with uh, another collaboration with the Moroccan universities before years from, I think, uh, seven years ago. We have been working about uh, implementing new technology, learning technologies at the European University, especially with the University of Abdelhamek Asadi which is the main house of uh, Professor Kamal. And uh, we have, uh, it, it, um, it was the idea the, to create the infrastructure uh, to make uh, not only MOOCs, uh, but SPOCs and uh, in general, which we call open educational contents. In the case of MOOCs, Multimedia uh, open courses. Um, the main um, open educational resources are uh, based on video and video recordings. So we have uh, implemented both the capacity to generate video recordings by means of uh, equipment, because this is a CBHE uh, project, and uh, the software which has been implemented based on uh, open software and um, open systems in Creative Commons and so on. So uh, this is the system we have designed to implement and successfully implemented, fortunately, because all the software and uh, all the hardware is working now in Moroccan universities, I think, I hope, uh, helping to the online period due to the COVID period and have been working the last months, I think uh, it, it was very good for our students because they, they needed all, all, of the, all of the infrastructure, uh, hardware and software available as possible. And uh, well, um, Mr. Kamal, I think, because I, I didn't know if I was first or Mr. Kamal, was first the consortium and the composition of the main project. I, I suppose Mr. Kamal will talk about, and I, I go in the um, in the uh, infrastructure um, technical description. Well, we are we intended to create uh, the infrastructure to 
create MOOCs, MOOCs, sustainable MOOCs, based on open solutions. What solution um, did we chose? Um, we um, chose the open edX as the solution to support the MOOCs. Let's say open edX is an advanced MOOC support platform like Moodle, but uh, more oriented to um, multimedia content and video content. And uh, this is the part of um, the open edX, edX uh, platform uh, generated by mainly Harvard and Massachusetts Institute of Technology, but available for any, uh, any person need to use that. And we combine the MOOC, uh, specialized MOOC platform uh, with our um, ability to generate a specific um, deploy of uh, multimedia, uh, mainly video contents. So the final system uh, should be what we can see in this slide. All the software implemented in the servers, we, uh, the, the equipment in uh, the Moroccan universities was hardware, mainly video uh, production and studio software and hardware service and software service and training of uh, Moroccan technicians, IT technicians to um, develop by themselves all the multimedia contents. So uh, the main program uh, running on the Moroccan server is Pomukit. Pomukit is a publication multimedia kit developed by the university University of Vigo since uh, years ago, and uh, which is open source, and it's capable of generating um, open educational resources in many formats, and absolutely in a way transparent to the teacher. The teacher only goes to the studio or in her laptop or in a specific um, uh, institutional event and sent to the, the master recording to Pomukit and Pomukit is on charge of uh, developing the contents uh, for Moodle to Claroline to YouTube to the Opencast, properly talking MOOC platform, even uh, video conferencing and a combination of all these deployments. Uh, so um, the whole system should be this. Gallicaster, Matterhorn, and Open edX. Matterhorn is an um, implementation of uh, a post-production of video educational contents. Uh, for example, uh, capable of uh, distinguish between changes in slides or uh, capable of generating um, subtitles or capable of generating uh focus on the face of the teacher or any other things only with a master video static master video so uh in the gallicaster is a kind of uh, system to record in the classroom all the videos and automatically automatically deployed to the, the to the servers so the system should be like this uh, this is the case of the video recording for a mooc which I insist is a mainly or more important content of the MOOCs. Uh, all the material uh, was sent to Moroccan universities. They have videos, they have uh, prompters, they have uh, recorders, they have the servers, and they have the, the software installed. This is the recording of uh, video content, and the video content passed. For example, this is an, another case of the video recording. This should be the the Gallicaster, but in the Magmo project, we uh, don't have uh, enough uh, money to buy Gallicaster. We only buy, we only bought um, video cameras. So uh, once uh, recorded, the master video is sent to Pumukit, and according to the desires of the teacher or according to the desires of the institution, this uh, Pumukit uh, makes the uh, appropriate video final uh, presentation to develop uh, 
streaming or to develop uh, uh, static videos or learning pills of any anything you want uh, to do or to reuse the video content. So minimizes the work of the teacher. And uh, this should be the complete system implemented on the Moroccan servers. Uh, teacher and the slides are combining in a different ways, uh, generating uh, a sort of different outputs. So YouTube or YouTube channels or the proper web TV or the MOOC or even Moodle, not only the, the MOOC platform, even is able to send to Moodle. And uh, this can work by night, for example, and uh, it has not to be online. Once recorded the video, the system keeps working, generating any kind of uh, final product, OER, Open Educational Resources, based on video mainly, and uh, storage and develop uh, any final format. Should be, this, is, this should be the complete scheme of the system implemented in, in Morocco. So we can generate with this project, Marmuk, we uh, generated the infrastructure, not only for uh, generating open educational resources based on video for MOOCs directly, but the capability of reuse these educational resources in the learning standard learning platforms like Moodle, in uh, video channels as YouTube, in web TVs you know, for each university or even in uh, events like uh, congresses or so, you know? And uh, um, I think an important thing uh, is not only the, we have uh, achieved the, not only the integration with the Open edX MOOC platform, but the Moodle integration. So uh, the same content, can be developed for any of these platforms. And I think uh, nothing more. This is uh, the resume, the technical resume of this project, Marmuk, and I think uh, Professor Kamal will uh, show us as uh, that thing has been developed by the consortium. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'll... Yes, uh, thank you. I can't hear you, Mr. Arklawi. Mr. Arklawi? We can't hear you. There is a... Oh, voilà, ça marche. Thank you. Toujours Professor pas. Professor Arjo. Hello. C'est bon, c'est bon, ça fonctionne, ça fonctionne à l'instant. <rire> D'accord, pardon. Alors, euh, thank you Latefa, thank you euh, Professeur Ancho. Uh, I am going to present to you other uh, general aspect uh, of the Marmok project. Uh, the Marmok project in uh, October, uh, Latefa, no, ok. Uh, en octobre uh, 2016, and ended in April 2021. The delay uh, was due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the, the project consor consortium consists of six uh, European and six Moroccan universities. Uh, two of them are private uh, universities. Uh, the University of Vigo is the coordinator of the project uh, uh, of, of the project, uh, Professor Ancho uh, from this university is the co coordinator of this project. Uh, the Moroccan go Governmental Authority for High Education, High Education is also a partner in this project at, as it uh, is a structural project. Uh, the mass important deliverable of the Marmok project, in addition of the training of teachers and technicians, are equipment for the MOOCs filming uh, stu uh, studios, 
uh, production and post-production equipment for pedagogical videos, uh, platforms and uh, server from uh, hosting mocks and uh, audiovisual storage equipment, and uh, of course, the creation of uh, several spokes and, uh, and uh, mocks. Uh, for the dissemination of uh, the, this project, the consortium were, uh, we used the classical channels, such as the, the classical media, social network, uh, conference. Uh, never, nevertheless, in the framework of this project, we will uh, share with you what we are proud of. Thank to uh, my uh, Professor Latifa, my friend and colleague, our host today, who is responsible for New Morocco. We launched the first Erasmus Academy on digital education in Morocco in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, we addressed all aspects of digital education from scripting to evaluation throughout serious games. Uh, more than 12 international experts took part in this training with a very strong impact on PhD students and the professor. And I will give uh, you uh, some uh, numbers. Uh, 3,377 teachers from 12 different countries. Uh, 2,310 PhD students, uh, six practical workshop, and uh, one round table. Uh, to, uh, to conclude, I will tell you that uh, Moroccan University, digital technology is very well used in the field of uh, scientific research, uh, but uh, not as much as it is in the pedagogical field. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has been an opportunity to make a big shift in the digitalization of the Moroccan University and uh, the appropriation by teachers of digital teaching. The uh, project Ma Marmok was a very important tool to ensure the educational continuity during the pandemic. Nevertheless, this is still a long way to go, especially in the management of change in uh, in, uni in university um, in Moroccan university uh, and I think that this is a theme that we can propose in the framework of the Erasmus capacity building project in the future uh, thank you very much uh, thank you Erasmus thank you so much uh, Dr. Klawi for this uh, this sharing I would like now from North Africa to go to Latin America <laughs> and uh, with another um, uh, uh, interesting project and inspiring project on digitalization. Dr. Pedro um, from Spain and sorry um, and uh, Dr. Eliana just to uh, sorry, uh, voilà. Dr. Eliana uh, from uh, Universidad Austral de Chile and uh, Dr. Pedro Munoz Merino from Universidad Carlos uh, uh, Tres de Madrid. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Latifa. It's, it's a pleasure to present the, the LALA project. Uh, which is a project for the application of learning analytics techniques in Latin America. Um, okay, so uh, the consortium is formed by seven partners, uh, three partners from Europe, uh, uh, Universidad Carlos III of Madrid from Spain, uh, which is the coordinator, uh, Carl Luben uh, from Belgium and the University of Edinburgh for United Kingdom. 
and four universities uh, from uh, Latin America. Uh, two uh, universities in Ecuador, um, SPOL and Universidad de Cuenca, and two universities uh, from Chile, uh, Universidad Austral de Chile and Pontificia Universidad uh, Católica. Um, this is the web page of the LALA project where you can find, if you are interested, much more information and all the deliverables are there, all the open source code that has been developed uh, for the tools for, for learning analytics, news, publications, and much more information. It's LALAproject.org. Uh, what is the motivation of the LALA project? Uh, the idea is that um, a, a lot of benefits can be obtained with the use, with the analysis of data for education and the educational process can be improved if this data is used. And Latin America was an underrepresented region in the use of data for making proper uh, decisions about uh, the educational process. And this project uh, tries to, um, uh, to, to come with some solutions from Europe and to adapt them uh, for the Latin American region and also tries to create a community in Latin America about the use of data to make informed decisions to improve uh, the learning process. So in the LALA project, uh, we have provided uh, with learning analytics solutions for the four partners in Latin America, but also other four partners that were not initially in the consortium has also implemented uh, the tools and have made uh, pilots and also a bigger community with, with other associate partners in Latin America has been created. And different tools of learning analytics have been adapted uh, different pilots have been done and uh, also guidelines about uh, how higher education institutions in Latin America can go with learning analytics uh, have been proposed. Uh, the project started in October uh, 2017 and ended in April uh, 2021. Um, as I said, the main objective is to improve the quality, the efficiency and the relevance of education, of higher education in Latin America by the use of uh, data that is in the educational processes and in educational platforms. Um, one of the deliverables that we provide with the LALA project is the LALA framework. And the LALA framework is a set of guidelines so that Latin American institutions can, um, uh, uh, can make use of learning analytics solutions. And it includes an institutional uh, dimension, a technological dimension of how to design the tools, uh, an ethical dimension, uh, taking into account privacy and ethical issues, and a community dimension. Um, about the LALA framework, one important aspect was um, to determine the needs, uh, the objectives of the institutions. And um, we, we did uh, with uh, 32 managers, more than 300 teachers and about uh, 2,000 students, uh, several uh, surveys, focus groups, interviews, and we extract conclusions about the decided objectives for the different institutions, the preferred tools, the main concerns, uh, the main challenge, and, and so on. So with this uh, process, uh, we extract uh, the different needs that are about learning analytics in different higher education institutions in Latin America. What are the software tools that were uh, adapted? Well, um, analyzing the needs, uh, we, we, uh, we adapted uh, different tools in the Latin American part. So, uh, we can see here in this slide, in the rows, the, the different uh, institutions that adapted at least one of the tools. And uh, on the columns, we can see the different software tools that were adapted. So uh, there is the Note My Progress tool, that is a counseling tool for courses. There was another tool, counseling for degrees, uh, a tool for uh, dropout for courses, another tool for dropout for degrees 
and another tool that is called uh, on task. And with the crosses, you can see the institutions that uh, adapted and implemented each one of these tools and where pilots uh, took place uh, during the project. Um, the, the tools were adapted from existing tools that were in Europe, but depending on the context and the needs, the tools were adapted slightly different in, in each partner. Uh, let's see very quickly the, these tools. Uh, the Note My Progress tools provides information about um, how uh, students are doing in MOOCs, when interacting in, in MOOCs. And, or, or, well, it, it, there is also a version uh, for learning management system for, for Moodle, so not only for MOOCs. And uh, it allows you to see uh, the time that the students are investing, the performance, but also about self-regulation strategy of students, like if the students uh, follow the objectives that they set or if they are not according to the objectives they, they put. And there are different indicators, different graphical representations so that uh, we can track uh, this, uh, this process, uh, this learning process. Um, another tool is about the detection of dropout uh, for, for courses in, in MOOCs. And in this case, uh, we can know uh, which students are at risk of not completing a course. And uh, we can send uh, different uh, messages. We can intervene in the learning process in order to try to modify uh, this. Um, another tool that was adapted in the project, in this case, in four different institutions, is a tool for cancelling degrees that is going to give um, an overview of how the different students are doing in the difference to give counseling to uh, the students to provide feedback and guidelines. Um, another tool was uh, for detecting dropout at the level of the degrees. And we can see here, for example, in a thermometer, um, what is the level of risk of a student to drop out in a degree? And what are the variables that can cause this uh, dropout? And uh, another tool is the on-task tool for providing feedback to students depending on different conditions. So these are the tools. And now I, I give the floor to uh, Professor Eliana. Thank you, Pedro. Um, can you continue? Yeah, thank you. Uh, for the execution of the pilots, we follow an iterative process of five phases preparation, where the pilot plan is defined and the baseline data are collected. Uh, then we sign agreement documents with all participants in the pilot. <clears throat> the following phase uh, is the training in the use of the learning analytics tools, and then each participant uses the tools with the support of project teams. In this phase, qualitative and quantitative uh, instruments are used to evaluate the use of the tools. Finally, uh, um, I, I, uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> An evaluation of the improvement phase is carried out where we evaluate the participants of the pilots, the usefulness of and impact of uh, the tools and processes. In this phase, we extract lesson learn and prioritize uh, tool improvements. The next. Pedro. Okay. Um, can you see the slide about the total yes. users? Okay. Yes, it's right. Thank you. Uh, considering the eight institution uh, participants, more than 22,000 of students and 900 teachers or counselors uh, were involved in the piloting. This is an important result from the point of view of uh, adoption of uh, processes. Moreover, uh, the level of use of the tools was good after analyzing the logs. The effectiveness of the tools was good. However, there is a difficulty to measure increase in learning since this is a difficult to measure and especially with a short period of years. 
the tools are perceived as useful also. Um, some lesson learned. The uh, importance of continuous improvement uh, of stakeholders to ensure ability, availability of resources. Importance of a multidisciplinary team in each phase of piloting. A robust quality assurance process prior to the interventions. User involvement in the design of the tools. Training is necessary to support the stakeholders to make correct interpretation and take proper decisions. Uh, um, capacity of adaptation depending on the context. Uh, the pilot proved to be an important step in developing the adoption la learning analytics processes. Uh, concerning the, the training, uh, more than 300 users were trained in all the participant institutions. On the other hand, more than 700 users from other institutions were trained in learning analytic processes through national training days and workshops. The LALA Handbook is available in the delivery variables section of the project website, lalaproject.org. Uh, this handbook describes the main results of the project, the LALA framework, the learning analytics tools that were adapted or developed depending on the case, and the piloting process. This handbook, handbook has been designed to support uh, the adoption, adoption of learning analytics tools in all institutions of higher education. LALA research results. Uh, LALA did not only generate uh, capacity building, but also interesting opportunities of in innovation and research. More than 40 research papers has been, have been generated related to the project, eight of them in top journal indexed in the first quartile of uh, journal citation reports. The dissemination of the project has been carried out through various spaces and events. The highly recommended space is the LALA Community YouTube channel, which contains more than 40 videos, including description of a learning analytics tool, training session in the LALA framework, development of pilots, presentation of results, among others. Other spaces of dissemination have uh, been presented at the conferences, workshops, training days, and newsletters or bulletins. All social, networks, uh, also so social networks, such as Facebook and Twitter, have been used to disseminate the results of the project. The LALA community has been developed around the annual conferences, the last of which was just held between October 19 and 21 in Arequipa, Peru, in conjunction, conjunction with the LACLO conferences. Uh, to give continuity to the LALA community, the LALA SIG has been created, a special interest group of the Society for Research and Learning Analytics, SOLAR. Currently, our community includes more than 70 associated partners. Our conclusions. Uh, the LALA framework helps institutions for the adoption, adoption of learning analytics emphasizing four dimensions, institutional, technical, ethical, and communal. The learning analytic adoption is, challenging, is a challenging process because there are many different stakeholders involved and many different decisions and analysis must be supported. We observe also different velocities depending on the context of each institution from six months to more than two years. A lot of commonality are present, for instance, in selected tools, data, indi data indicators, but several differences also, uh, such as uh, architecture, look and feel, and functionality in dashboard, among others. Another relevant aspects of, uh, of our conclusions are the following. Source code uh, and LAL handbook are available on the project website. Learning analytics tools evolve during the time, so we need a continuous monitoring uh, with the stakeholders, uh, iterate on the phases of design, do improvement from the pilot results. Uh, 
pilot with great number of potential users, more than 22,000 students and 900 teachers. The project achieved a good impact, effectiveness, effectiveness and usefulness. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eliana. Uh, now I give the floor to questions. And we have the first one from uh, Heba Said. Uh, she's asking all of you, <laughs> actually, what other priorities than digitalization does uh, your project uh, address? I guess it's not only for one, um, for one project. Uh, so you could, who wants to answer? I could not add the... Uh, who feel at, uh, who, who feel concerned by the question? <laughs> Pedro? Okay, maybe I, I can start. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I think uh, apart from digitalization, other uh, objectives uh, could be achieved in, in this project. So, for, for the NALA project, uh, the improvement of education, a focus on the improvement of education is, is there. So, with the use of technology, with digitalization, that's true, but uh, it's the technology, uh, the digitalization for the improvement of education. So it's a big focus on uh, education. And also, uh, I think uh, it served uh, not also for creating a, a community, but also for research purposes, not only uh, for adoption of, of tools, for adoption of methodologies to create a community about it, but also, we could also um, achieve uh, um, research results because with the application of these tools, as the context was different, uh, new variables were taken into account and, and with the analysis, we, we found interesting research. Yes, I think you are right because uh, at the, uh, uh, the capacity building project, aims finally also to modernize the higher education uh, through using the uh, the uh, digitalization so any any other things to um, to add maybe on that point thank you again now uh, because um, uh, eva is reminding me because i i i have noted a lot of uh, things uh, while you present in your project lala uh, and I think as professors, we are all uh, very interested by your um, your project because uh, uh, helping us to detect and predict predict uh, uh, students in difficulties, for example, that is something that could be very useful. Especially when we have a lot of students in I think this was by the process throw is develop uh, research and this is something that is highly recommended and 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 also that we notice that is more and more done in Erasmus so thank you so much for your sharing uh, from my side I have a question and I will uh, profit from the fact that uh, we have Pedro and uh, Dr. Sanchez, Dr. Pedro, uh, Dr. Merino and Dr. Sanchez from Spain, uh, because the project highlighted the impact on on the uh, on on the different uh, uh, partner countries' context. But it is very interesting as well to see how um, uh, what what is the impact as well. Uh, for, for you as, as program countries and as European uh, partners? Oh, oh, okay, uh, th th thank you for the question. Um, sorry, uh, Dr. Latifa, I, I didn't hear uh, all the things because my connection, I think, failed, but uh, um, uh, the, the last thing I, I heard is about the impact also for European partners. I think 
the impact for European partners uh, in, in the case of the LADA project was also strong uh, because uh, we also um, organize events in Europe uh, for the dissemination of the project and um, also some of the results cannot only be uh, uh, applied to Latin America, but also I think they can be applied in Europe or in, in any regions also. Uh, not only because of the results of research that that were things that uh, were new for, I think, for, for the community and they can be applied uh, to, to all other places, but um, also uh, uh, the, the, the tools that were adapted or developed uh they uh, we we can uh, we can use new functionality of these tools that were not present initially with the original tools that we had in europe so these tools were improved and new ideas arise during the project with the needs of the latin american partners and also the uh, together we uh, contribute to uh, to create new knowledge that also we we also learn a lot from, from Latin America. And in addition, we also organize uh, workshops and events in, in Europe to disseminate the results of the project also in, in Europe. So I, I think that there is also a, a good impact uh, in, in Europe of, of, these, of these projects. Thank you, Pedro. Dr. Sanchez? No? Yeah, I, I want to say that um, in, in our case, we have um, noted that in the period of COVID mainly, uh, we have um, a necessity of share among uh, the Spanish and in European universities, all the resources available to complete the, the learning. And uh, some of the improvements made in the um, Marmuk project was derived uh, basically, uh, from the sharing of uh, our universities to improve the, the main objectives uh, due to the COVID uh, special, uh, special period, because in, in most of the European universities was face-to-face uh, -face university, not online university, in our case, in the Marmot project. And uh, suddenly we became online, most of us, because uh, the COVID. And in some of uh, most of us, we need to re reformulation to make a reformulation of, of our online capabilities. And most of this reformulation uh, were made uh, sharing uh, resources, sharing knowledge among the universities, European universities, so also. And uh, we were able to improve with this. Uh, uh, knowledge or sharing during the COVID period to improve the final results of the even the, the Marmuk project itself. Okay, thank you so much for your uh, answers. Now I will go to the partner countries and the, the partners to ask you uh, if there is uh, an advice that you could give to uh, newcomers, because in the audience, certainly there are uh, some um, uh, academics, professors, partners that are interested to think uh, about a capacity building project. What would be your advice to them? Uh, uh, and here I'm asking Dr. Klawi, Dr. Sheing, and uh, um, uh, sorry, oh, voila, I pin you. And um, uh, Dr. Kababayev, uh, as as you, from your experience, one advice each one. Ladies first, maybe. <laughs> I can't hear okay. you. Okay, <laughs> uh, thank you. I think the most important is to have a, a good network uh, with a. Um, to work with with someone uh, we can knew and uh, we are uh, mm. good uh, relations yeah. yes this is uh, the more important uh, to in my case i i i was uh, invited by another uh, researcher uh, research 
so, uh, from from PUC, from the Catholica University, uh, uh, and uh, I think this is the most uh, important uh, thing. Important. You are, you are right, definitely. Mm -hmm. Dr. Klawi, we can't hear you. We do not hear you. Uh, no, it's, it's not working still. Maybe Dr. Kababayev and... Uh, and Aisulu. And I Could you please repeat the question? My, my question, if you have to give an advice from your experience in capacity building, what will be this advice to newcomers? I think that we have a problem, I can't hear it. Tu m'entends maintenant? Oui, now I can hear you, Dr. Klawi. Sorry, I think there was a... <laughs> Euh, je peux maintenant, oui. Oui, 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 je crois que. Uh, I think uh, the biggest problem of the, the project, this project, capacity building, is the turnover of the teams. Mm -hmm. uh, if you uh, may advise, you need stable teams for uh, the, 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 the success the of the project. Period. Okay, that's. Uh, I think it's it's also interesting as well. A good connection, good relations and communication with within the consortium and having great relationships and also having the same team along uh, along the, the, the life cycle of the project. It's something very important as well. Yes, I definitely agree. I don't know if, uh, oops, sorry. I don't know if um, you wanted to add something. Uh, Aisolon or Dr. Uh, Kababayev, if not, we will I'm sorry, okay. I'm Russia. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just the connection yeah, problems. Uh, любой проект должен быть направлен на общество, на социум. So any project should be uh, devoted to community. Uh -huh. И обязательно должен затрагивать вот это непрерывное образование от дошкольного до после вузовского образования все звенья. Should also um, uh, highlight all uh, spheres, uh, life lo uh, life learning, yes, long life learning uh, from schools and to high education should be touched also in this pro in the projects. И, и любой проект должен быть таким прозрачным, активным, чтобы каждый, кто входит, кто видит этот проект, мог взять для себя какой-то опыт. So should everyone who starts the project should um, uh, take an experience from another project. So should be so active and... Um, so transparent, absolutely. transparent as well. I think that you are, you are, thank, thank you so much for those uh, advices because uh, you are, I completely agree as well. And uh, this is why I call the wisdom of projects because, and that's why today, uh, once again, we are in this virtual fair. Uh, I'm sorry, but I didn't see that there was another question on the Q&A about the LALA work, uh, is the LALA framework, sorry, accredited in participating countries? That was the question. Voila. Oh, okay, thank you for, for the question. Um, well, uh, we applied the, the LALA framework in the, in the four different consortium partners and we validate the, this LALA framework. So, the different the 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 creation of the LALA tools uh, and the pilots are according to the rules established in the in the LALA framework. So we we have applied the, this framework in in these four uh, use cases. Okay. 
Thank you so much for your answer. Thank you so much for all of you for this uh, very interesting um, uh, session. I would like uh, to thank also all the participants for uh, for their participation. Thank you to our uh, Kazakh uh, friends because they give us the possibility to taste this beautiful language and to discover it. And I think this is also the magic of Erasmus+. Plus. Thank you all of you and I wish you uh, the best. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Panelist,